All right, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the 17th episode of Happy Hour with Karnaticon. Today we're joined by Abhik Mukherjee, who's a Kolkata-born sitar player. Um, he's actually started playing sitar when he was uh, six years old, uh, introduced to it by his father, Sri Tarit Mukherjee, and uh, as well as Sri Bimal Chatterjee. He was also receiving vocal instruction at that time from Sri Kalyan Bose. Um, Abhik has performed like since the age of nine. His first nine, his first public performance was at the age of nine at the governor's house in Kolkata. Since then, obviously, he's performed in many countries in many continents, um, and currently is the founding member of uh, Brooklyn Raga Massive, which is an Indian classical music artists collective. He's also the director of academic affairs at the Chandian School Chandra. of Music. And is currently based in New York. So hi, um, Abhik. Nice to meet hi. you. How are you doing nice today? Nice to meet you too. I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day here, actually. The nice. sun is up after last night's rain, and so it's pretty nice. Nice. It's a little it's chilly, pretty... but nice. Chilly still, yeah. Has it a snowed at all yet for you guys? Uh, yeah, it did. It did last last uh, month. It snowed uh, mm -hmm. quite a lot, and then it was uh, since then it was nice weather. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, I've given you a very brief introduction about yourself, but I would love to hear more about you and kind of what, um, you know, how you got into a sitar playing. Yeah, um, I was brought up in a family. It's like a joint family. You know, in India, we used to have joint families. Yeah, yeah like uncles, uh, cousins, all staying in one big house. Yeah. So that's how I started. And uh, my father was a sitar player. My uncle was uh, playing tabla and uh, my cousin brother, who is elder to me, uh, he was playing sarod. So it was pretty obvious that I would pick up an instrument, but mm -hmm. it was, I was not given a choice. <laughs> so it was uh, one day my father came and said, this is the sitar and you have to play. And uh, like, we don't get choice in, as Indian uh, kids. <laughs> we don't have choices. We don't get to make choices. So, uh, so yeah. So, and in the beginning, I really hated sitar. Uh, the reason behind it, because this was the instrument, I totally blamed it on air, the sitar that was keeping me away from cricket fields or the football field. You know? <laughs> it was taking away my playing time. So, yeah. and my dad uh, made a very um, different routine that I have to play one and a half hour every day during mm -hmm. school and three hours during holidays. Oh, that wow. means Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. So one and a half hours in the morning, I remember it. it's always 7.30 to 9.00. <laughs> and in the morning and 7.30 to 9 in the evening. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So uh, I really hated the instrument. But uh, at the age of 10 or 11, I somehow fell in love uh, with it. It's like a very like an arranged marriage. <laughs> and now it's now, now we are almost like inseparable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a very lovely way to talk about it. Um, before the sitar was kind of given to you, um, have you ever heard it before? Do you remember the first oh, time? Yeah, yeah I, I heard because the other teacher, Sri Bimal Chatterjee, used to be my father's guru also. So he used to come to teach and my uh, cousin brother's uh, Sarod uh, teacher used to come and teach. And tabla, there were always musicians coming and going. So music was a, not a new thing to me. Yeah. But this imposition of uh, forcible play of sitar was a new thing, which I didn't uh, approve in the beginning. But <laughs> to me, no one listens to you when you're a kid. So. It's good, though, because my parents gave me too much freedom. They were like, they put me in music class, they put me in Bharatanatyam class, and I said, I don't want to do any of this. And they were like, okay, fine. Now I'm like, you guys should have forced me. What kind of Indian parents are you? Like, I don't have any skill because of you guys. <laughs> so I think it's the a good thing. See, you, you, you have Saraswati's blessing because you are also doing anything that talking is bad, <laughs> baby. You know, it's, it's, it's a sort of a blessing too. Oh. So oh, yeah, thank you. Um, so how's your like current practice schedule? Like, is it still the same as your um, younger no, days? No, no, definitely not. Definitely <laughs> not. Because there's no one uh, uh, sitting with a ruler to uh, beat me if I don't do it. You know, so obviously it changes. But yeah. uh, in this pandemic, the practice has been more than general days, which is a good thing about the pandemic, the, though about the other things, it's horrible. Yeah. But you get to practice more because you're sitting at home. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, since the second spike on New York City and throughout uh, United States, um, we are again back home and waiting for the vaccine to be, uh, you know, uh, getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And so 
it's a little bit uh, tough and depressing where music helps. And other times I do some sketching and stuff. That's it. Nice, nice. Um, you know, when you were learning and when you obviously st- you started performing at a very young age at nine, but like, how long do you think it took you to be confident that you are a competent player? Like, how long did it take when you were on stage oh. and you felt like, okay, I'm good at what I'm doing? No, I'm still not confident. <laughs> I think it will take some more time. Maybe. Really? Wow. You know, seriously, the reason behind it, when you go to, uh, when you perform, uh, uh, do, uh, do you perform? No, no. No. Okay, when, when you are performing, the first thing that you would see that if you enter a room and everyone is looking at you and yeah. think about that, it's looking for one hour to three hours, Yeah, you know, continuously. And that itself is little nerve wracking, Yeah, you know, <laughs> and then stage itself is a very lonely place because yeah. if you make a mistake, that's yours mm-hmm. only. And yeah. so these things come in mind. Yeah. while performing of course mm-hmm. and then i start and gradually sometimes i get confidence about uh, my improvisation sometimes i don't not confident yeah. this is honest truth that's how it happens yeah so. um you talked a little bit about improvisation i would love to kind of expand on that because i've heard that a lot of sitar playing is improvisation is that true yeah yeah in the indian music is mostly improvisation particularly I would say North Indian music, the composition part is like 10% or 5% of the whole concert, hardly. Mm-hmm. And the rest, you have to make it up. Right. Yeah. And is why is that particularly so with sitar in, in general? Not with sitar, with everything. Every, every? with, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in sitar in particular, with everything. It's nice. improvisation-based based act. Because you have lyrics in a composition and the lyrics, there, you have to... Uh, act out that lyrics by mm-hmm. singing um, mm-hmm. or playing uh, about that composition. So yeah. there are lots of emotions within the same uh, word. If, if we say a sentence, it can be if we say, um, well, uh, I won't talk to you. Mm-hmm. If this is the, so I won't talk to you or I won't talk to you. I won't talk to you. So these sort of mm-hmm. expressions and all these things that come out through music um that's how uh, it works i think yeah, yeah. very cool yeah, so very improvisation cool. is needed because each time each raga each expression would come a new one and, uh, with a new blossom and a new flavor mm-hmm. and to capitalize on that flavor and you have to work on that expression all around that expression and make it more and more um beautiful i would say yeah 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 i know that makes a lot of sense very cool um How's the sitar playing community like in New York? Like, are there a lot of sitar players? Like, you there are know, quite a lot of sitar players. Yeah. But New York is such a city that any instrument you name in this world, there will be quite a few good players in the same city. Nice. And so, yeah, there are quite a lot of good sitar players in. That's New York awesome. City. And obviously, you've performed kind of all over, like in ten countries, in four continents. Like, yeah. what has been like one memorable performance amongst all of these? Ah. So uh, one could be, <clears throat> um, there had been quite a few. Mm-hmm. One had been very recently, I performed in Calcutta uh, last year before the pandemic. Yeah. And um, actually almost the half of the auditorium was filled with musicians only. And these are the performances that I always love to perform. Like yeah. when it's musicians are there, and it's it's really amazing to play for them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a very different uh, feeling. I'm sure, but is it also more scary because there you'll be like you know, and a normal audience may not necessarily pick up on mistakes that you make, but then musicians are sitting in there. Is that more hyper? Yes, that's there too. Of course, yeah. that that factor you, you get more tensed because yeah. Uh, yeah. But finally, when it comes out, it it uh, acts well. And yeah. in contrast to that, I have also played for Martin Luther King Jr., that statue that was uh, being done in uh, like 2012. Yeah. Uh, President Obama was there. So wow. I played for that. Um, and it was like uh, 5,000, 10,000 audience. Uh, it was huge. So um, playing for that is a very different story. Like you play for 10 minutes and then you have to uh, be ready and be called and you just perform for 10 minutes and then you go out and the next artist comes in there were lots of artists right yeah so it and like you can see like an ocean of crowds sitting in front of you that's a very different um feeling 
Yeah. But I I don't get scared there very much as much as get scared to play in front of half a hall filled with uh, musicians. Is, That's yeah. scary. I'm sure. I'm sure that is scary. Um, but like with this experience in itself, it must have been so amazing. Like having Obama in the audience and just you know being involved. There must have been a ton of security and lots of artists. Oh yeah. Did you meet a yes. lot of interesting artists in this? Oh, I I got to see Stevie Wonder's. I got to see Aretha Franklin. Mm-hmm. and you know like it it was crazy for me and it was like oh my god these people are like gods like you know <laughs> so yeah it was it was oh, amazing was really amazing so once in a lifetime thing for a lot of people yeah. that's yeah. awesome that you got to do that and great um you know what do you like most about performing or like playing or performing like what's your favorite thing about the sitar and playing music on it see i always uh, the sitar i play there are two types of sitar one is uh, vilayat khan style mm-hmm. and the other is ravi shankar style mm-hmm. so i play the vilayat khan sub style and uh, there are lots of uh, chords that you can uh, play in that mm-hmm. you know a chord backup so that's what i lo- love uh, playing about sitar and the the tone itself i i don't know because i have been playing it since i was a kid uh, mm-hmm. the tone itself the the richness of the sound the timbre the texture i love it everything even when a novice is playing i will just sit and listen to the sound i really love it so it's, yeah it's it's the sound the familiarity with the sound that you grew up with you have so much of good memories mm-hmm. with to relate to so yeah. that also makes an instrument very like um, likable yeah um, it's yeah. the same thing goes with sarod because i have so good memories with uh, sarod and tabla yeah. and later on violin yeah 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 so you've played all of these no i i i i am without uh, i only can play a little bit of sitar otherwise i'm pretty much good for nothing a little bit yeah. i'm sure it's not a little bit but uh, you know i have obviously more to ask you but before we move on can we hear a little bit of the sitar and then we'll yeah sure 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 yeah, yeah whatever little bit i know i will try to um i <laughs> you're being very humble right now <laughs> there's a rag called kafi in um, north indian uh, music i in karnatak i think it's known as kharahara priya sort of so i will try to play a little bit can you hear me loud and clear i can hear
that is not a little thank bit. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh wow, that was brilliant. I don't know. I think I feel like thank this sitar always transports me to like an older, like mystic world. You know, where you feel like you're in this Renaissance period in yeah. India. It's so beautiful. I love the sound of the sitar. You know, it was great. Uh, yes, yeah, sitar is not that uh, old instrument as it says to be, like twelve hundred Amir Khosru, but that's not true. Sitar was created during Akbar's court. Uh, to accompany qawwali songs in the beginning that was the first uh, instance the sitar was uh, made by there were two brothers during muhammad shah rangila's reign mm -hmm. muhammad shah rangila was like um, the last of the mughal princes mm -hmm. um, he was there during 1939 1739 when nadir shah attacked uh, india and took away the peacock throne and everything mm -hmm. so he was a a uh, mughal ruler who was always into music and art and nothing of the he, he was he didn't believe in other worldly stuff to do mm -hmm. and he often forgot that he was also a sultan he was like a uh, emperor so mm -hmm. uh, obviously um, he the, uh, his court has two brothers adarang and sadarang so mm -hmm. adarang niamat khan um's brother um, amir khan mm -hmm. he took used to have the pen name khusru so he invented or discovered the sitar and made it from veena and it was actually an instrument to um, follow qawwali songs I see. only with the right hand strokes not very much means that is the glissandos on the left hand I these see. were these the sitar that you see right nowadays it's a very modern format which started from 1920s 30s mm -hmm. and this sitar is uh, vilayat khan's own creation and it is like 1950s oh, early wow. 50s or end of 40s nice nice that was really enlightening i never knew about the background or like the history of the sitar that's fantastic yeah. to know very cool very cool you know i mean like we talk so much about ragas and stuff and they're described as like something that's extremely um, like they are extremely complex compositions but can you tell us like what exactly happens in a raga are there like certain fixed parameters it's it's um, very uh, difficult to tell how a raga is composed uh, mm -hmm. because uh, a it could be with the arohi that's the ascending notes and an uh, a combination of descending notes can make a raga mm -hmm. like if i if i play can i give an example of course yeah uh, so if i play just so it's just a scale called kalyan thad Mm -hmm. Thaat is a scale like Melakarta. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Lydian of Western scale, and I think Yamani uh, Yamani Kalyani for Karnataka. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure about that, but yes. So this is Yaman for us. This is a scale, but this is not a raga. Mm -hmm. So if we play the scale, it will be just. You can do whatever. but that is not raga for this to become raga yaman mm -hmm. we start not from sa we start from ni so now it's getting a structure right. a shakal a face mm -hmm. so on this family uh, like uh, close to yaman with uh, there could be some ragas uh, which are related but mm -hmm. each will be different because of its own phrases characteristic phrases mm -hmm. which are called pakars so raga should have those pakars which will tell first the raga belongs to this such, such and such family mm -hmm. and now it has got this and this characters and throughout your concert you are describing that raga right and uh, to your audience that's why the beginning part of the concert is called alap that where you're introducing that yeah. raga to the audience yeah and yeah. then comes the bandish and everything so nice nice very cool very cool um you know when you're performing like you've obviously performed in a in a lot of places and there have been some amazing memories but like when you were on stage has there been like a time when you're like this is you know 
you you're you're doing this full time right like you moved yeah, you moved yeah, to yeah, yeah. the us and all of that and this is your like your calling like have you felt that like in one of your performances or just when uh, you play, i guess yeah sometimes I, i i really feel that you know what would i have done if there was no sitar in my life <laughs> or if there was uh, no music in my life i don't know actually yeah. because uh 10 to 5 i tried 10 to 5 or 10 to 6 i i did some jobs at one point of time in my life yeah. and it didn't uh, suit me i i i couldn't uh, do it yeah. because a repetition of the same thing sometimes it be, it becomes a little difficult uh, mm-hmm. for me to do so it needs change and for me if i play yaman for one month each time it will come different mm-hmm. so that's what the music can offer or any for form of art can offer because yeah. it gives you that very well um, welcomed change that we all need in life yeah. a little yeah. break yeah, yeah for sure and if you're able to play that yourself i mean because for me it's by listening to music that i get my break right but right. i think being able to play it yourself is another level of happiness and fulfillment it's, it's a, it, yeah it's a different and then also it sometimes it's uh, frustrating it can be when you mm. sometimes listen to old greats and try to follow the thing and mm. that thing is not coming yeah. it's 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 a really frustrating journey sometimes it can be really frustrating yeah yeah no i can imagine that um what brought you to the us and like how did your journey with music kind of because most people i think would immigrate the other way right like from the us would end up going to india to pursue music yeah. generally how, yeah how this, yeah it, it, yeah uh, i came here when i was like uh, 32 like 10 years 11 years ago and marriage brought me to us oh nice actually yeah yeah i am me and my wife she she is a us citizen we got married in india and we were planning to stay there mm-hmm. and we we already started our life in delhi and mm-hmm. then uh, suddenly uh, she got this uh, she started doing masters in new york university so mm-hmm. she had to come so i had to i i followed and that's how it worked nice nice and like how different is the music scene here when i mean obviously it's different but what would be the differences and uh, similarity new york and uh, new york is really good music scene for indian classical music as far as it's concerned and other parts of the us the scene is pretty good mm-hmm. and but performing wise um the new york audience You, you, when you play yeah, we are very used to having wa wa kya ba this sort of uh, appreciation that uh, makes you improvise more yeah, yeah. Uh, in new york you get it nice you know nice. yeah but not other places in the us but in new york you get it in many places right. and right. The, so the feeling is almost the same as you're performing here or there yeah. but um in india what happens when you go as the time is very stretchable in india Mm-hmm. you know it's really indian stretchable time ist you know so we stretch the time quite a lot so a concert doesn't start itself on the stage it yeah. starts from the green room where <laughs> you sit there and the, they are having tea and musicians come in you're talking and then the guy who was supposed to sing for 40 minutes is singing for 1 hour 40 minutes you know <laughs> this is how the music is made and then you go there and perform it's 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 a different thing It's yeah. a it's a different thing. The music is me me. It's like the kitchen, and there you uh, the green room is the kitchen, and you cook there and you serve the dish in the auditorium. <laughs> so, yeah, no, <laughs> that is true. That is true in India, especially because even when we go for concerts, we're like, okay, when are they going to come? Like, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it 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 takes time for the artist to get ready, and even the audience to get ready. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. Um, but like, uh, you you're performing. You still do a lot of stuff back home in India as well, right? You go yeah, back yeah, to concerts. Yeah, then I go back. Yes, every uh, winter I go back. Um, not this one, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I go back and I perform there. Yeah. Um, I mean, COVID has changed everybody's lives for sure. It but did. like, how how much of an impact has it had on uh, on you and like the music and the journey here? Well. Um, uh i have some students which um keeps on going mm-hmm. and um uh, then um i uh performed a few um uh, like uh, big events and a few events nice. but uh, not very much obviously the concerts have been a big hit mm-hmm. and but another thing is when you don't go out you don't spend money <laughs> <laughs> yeah <True. laughs> uh, yeah so 
that's everything is uh, going on somehow, but uh, it's sometimes a depressing time. But uh, some of us musicians right from the beginning have um, lived in a small COVID bubble of ours. Mm -hmm. And so we meet quite often and practice together, that's which nice. is really helpful for our own sanity. Because yeah. uh, musicians and artists, uh, some people say, I don't, they're a little bit crazy. So <laughs> and at this time they go uh, more. So that's how we try to maintain the sanity. That's yeah. nice. Um, that's really good. So have you done a few of these uh, virtual concerts? Yes, uh, one was done by uh, uh, WKCR uh, and New York City uh, Radio and Brooklyn Raga Massive live for 24 hours uh, oh, wow. music. Um, yeah. So I performed in there. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I performed in quite a few social distancing concerts, uh, which happened upstate That's and cool. um, in New Jersey also. Like uh, the artists are quite a distant from each other and the audience is in a different tent. Right. So, yeah, the, it's delicate. So it's, it's a, we have done that. So quite a few, particularly right. during the season of uh, August, uh, September, October, November. You mm -hmm. know, these are the very busy seasons here for concerts. Mm -hmm. And um, and now it's a little bit uh, stopped for now. Yeah. And now we have got the vaccine also. So I hope we get it quickly. And yes. then we get back to and resume our normal lives. Yeah. So I'm sure you miss uh, performing and being yeah. like normal you know, going out and doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. What, what, what are, well, when you get your vaccine, what, what is the first thing that you want to do? I think uh, mm, that's a good question. I think I'd want to eat in a restaurant. I feel like I have, well, not ah. exactly. I haven't done that in a year. And, you know, my husband and I, we like going out and exploring different food. Now we just, you know, you bring it home. It's not the same thing. I know. I know. It's, it's not the same. It's not. Yeah. Same. So just, I think the last meal we had was in February. 2020 just before lockdown in a restaurant yeah. so then after that we've never been anywhere so yeah that would be nice i would do that first what about you what would you do first well uh yes restaurant is there definitely that's one of the priorities and yeah. then listening to and going to uh, concerts yeah and, and, and <laughs> I, yeah but maybe the first thing that i would do i will hug my friends <laughs> yes oh, yeah. yeah it's been long so yeah yes yes like i get now, to hug them yeah, that is that is that is absolutely yeah. true. I think I would do that also. Like it's so hard, right? When you're walking out and you see friends and family, you're just like, oh, okay, let's just you know be far yeah. away. You're too close. Don't come too close. Yeah, exactly. See how the world has changed. And, and uh, people uh, like here, um, when you are even like a coughing in the street, someone, you know, <laughs> every people look at them with suspicion <laughs> and stuff. It's 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 very embarrassing. They look like meerkats. You know, have you seen meerkats? Yes, I you know, have. They stand up and look, you know, <laughs> so that's uh, uh, the people are looking at people when, if there's a coughing or a sneezing anywhere. And, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah when you uh, take uh, New York subways, uh, sometimes you, you see these uh, scenes, you know, one at the end of the compartment sneezed and everyone would move out a little <laughs> bit and try to maintain as much as like good social behavior, yet not to be rude, but trying to get away. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's, it's very sad to see. It's, yeah. it's changed a lot. And um, I just moved here a year ago and I've spent more than a year now inside, like, you know, just over a year ago. And I've spent mm -hmm. more than a year staying indoors. So it hasn't been the best U.S. experience. Oh. <laughs> so you, you moved to U.S. Uh, just before COVID? Uh, no, in August of 2019. So I had a few months. Okay. And mm -hmm. then after that, I've been, yeah, I've been indoors. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yep, not much to see. But um, in terms of travel within the US for you for performance, like performances, what is the next kind of, I'm assuming the Bay Area, because like we have so many Indians here, is that your next kind of destination when you're invited to perform? Yeah, I, I, I actually had concerts in April in Bay Area this April. Quite no. a few them, I yeah, I, I hope they call me again. Oh, that would be so good. I will definitely be there yeah, in the but, but I, I, I go to Los Angeles every year, um, like uh, March or nice. April, mm -hmm. the, and stay there for a couple, um, a, a week or so. Nice, so, nice. Okay, so nice. You are, you're from Los Angeles or you're in? No, I'm in the Bay Area. I'm, I'm near Bay. San Jose. Yeah. 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 Last uh, September, I, to 2019 September, I was in the Bay Area in San Francisco to perform. Nice. I would love to see a live performance. So whenever you're here next, you should let Definitely me know. Definitely, I will let you know. Definitely yeah, will that would be great. Um, Abhik, I think uh, I would love to hear a little bit more of the sitar and then we can continue some what okay. you can play. 
whatever okay. it would be like. Mm, uh, let me see. Can I tune the sitar for a bit? Yeah. There's a rag called Bihag. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm playing a little bit of it. Amazing. It was Thank like so I was much. in a different world altogether. I think we should just forget this happy hour and have you play for the rest of it. We'll make it a concert. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. You know, somewhere I think I remember reading that the um, Veena and this Persian instrument called the setar. Setar was. The setar is a yeah, Persian instrument that the same means three and tar is string. So this I used to be a three stringed instrument, but Persian setar. And this one is very different in even in playing and even at the looks. Right. So mainly I would say this sitar came from, it's one of the variants of Veena class. Of the Veena. So what's the difference between like our regular Veena and, and this sitar? Like what, what see, is... That the regular Veena is played this way. It's, it's the, you see the Ma Saraswati playing yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And then in sitar, there's uh, Rudra Veena. Uh, in North Indian music, there's Rudra Veena, yeah. which is played the same way, but it's a big, uh, too big. No, right. like gourd, 
Yeah. Is, yeah. So there's also the pulling and the stuff are there, but um, mainly Drupad style, that's the very old style, is played in this. Here in Sitar, we play the Khayal style, the modern style. I see. I see. Uh, we, of course, we everything originated from Drupad, so we play those, but not mm -hmm. that much as the win that uh, we call it in North India. We mm -hmm. play. I see. I see. Nice. Um, in your performances, have they always been like solo performances, or uh, have you played for like dance productions? Say, for example, have you played for? I, I played a lot for a lot of uh, dance productions. Yeah. I played. Now we had a. When we were in, I was in Calcutta. I joined a Carnatic band mm -hmm. uh, called Laya Vinyas. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we used to play a lot for. We have composed music a lot with uh, a lot of uh, concerts with um, dancers, a lot of productions with dancers. Nice. So I I played for Manipuri. I played for Mohini Attam. I played for Bharatnatyam. Of course, Kathak is there. Kathak yeah. is like an intrinsic part of. Uh, uh, Sitar is an intrinsic part of Kathak music, yeah. uh, one of them. And um, then uh, I have played for uh, Orisi also. Nice, nice. And what's the difference between these pl playing for dance productions versus just being a solo performer? The, uh, if you ask me, I am not very good with the performing with dance. Because mm. uh, the reason you have to memorize a lot of things, yeah. you know, like this comes five times, this comes seven times and these things, you know, you have to keep in mind. Yeah. And um, these, I'm not very good with these things. I always tend to play it two, three more times or I tend to play, you know, I change a lot yeah. and you have to play exact the same format. Yeah. You and, can't improvise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, you're accompanying the dancer. The dancer is the main artist there. And yeah. as much as help you can provide and, um, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm not very good at it, but I try my best. <laughs> like, like how you know how to play a little bit of sitar. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of it's yeah. I, I played with a dance. I, I uh, the last year I there was a big New York Kathak festival. Nice. I got a chance to play with Pandit Birju Maharaji. Oh wow! So, uh, so but uh, yeah, but I am not very always confident. As I'm saying that, uh, not very confident. As I am a little bit more confident. <laughs> the, playing a solo or a duet or a trio yeah. but not yeah yeah because nice. of the memorizing factor you know yeah. you have to memorize a lot but, but with Pandit Biju Maharaji that's the best part you don't don't need to memorize anything he was was all improvisation and yeah. you just have to keep the time and yeah. watch him dance it's like uh, <laughs> it's like heaven somewhere yeah 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 you're just you're just just uh, watch him that's it yeah, yeah, nice, very cool. Um, you know, you're a teacher, you're teaching uh, people the sitar. Um, besides just kind of, you know, when you're training them, like what do you think is complementary for them, complementary education for them for, to be successful musicians where they are building like good habits um, and to be successful? Like what would be a complementary skill for them to learn? Uh, I uh, I, I didn't get the question actually. Could you yeah, no. So, like, when you're it? training, um, when you're training musicians, of course, learning music is important and discipline and all of that. But what are the complementary skills uh, you would say are important for them to be a successful musician and build like good habits? Oh, a is patience is needed. Mm -hmm. One and if uh, say a certain phrase is not coming, you need to have that perseverance and dedication that I will get it. Right. And every day I, I used to do when I was a kid and once I fell in love with sitar, I used to promise that today I will do this to my sitar. Right. And that a promise that you cannot break, <laughs> you know, like a promise to yourself is a promise you can never break. Even if you break it, your conscience will always remind you. That's what I was uh, I was taught. Yeah. So make a promise to yourself or to your sitar nice. that you're going to do. So if you still... No, if uh, I had to, at one point of time, I used to get up at the, every day at four in the morning and play till seven. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. then I, I would, uh, I, I was doing my master's in computer application there. So it's pretty, uh, you mm -hmm. know, lots of pressure in uh, studies. So I, then yeah. I used to study and then go to college and then come back and again practice. So, but four to seven every day, even if I get uh, uh, to bed like 11 or 12, I wow. had to get up at four because that's a promise I made. Some days I, I, I missed, obviously, 
-hmm. And then the every day, uh, I, I couldn't even look at my sitar with a straight face, you know, I have to lower oh. down my eye, you know, so because I promised. Yep. yep. You know, so that's, that's the thing I think you need to promise and, and also s stop and watch and observe nature a mm. little bit. Mm. Like how a, how a snail moves, you know, take time and look at it, just not to uh, take an Instagram video and post it mm. like online, you know, but still look at it. Yeah. And the butterfly flies, you know, it's, it's everything has a meaning and try to put notes into that flight, yeah. how it will go. And yeah. all these things, you know, try that creative process, whatever you see, can you interpret through music? Nice. That's a very... that's the, yeah, that's a process that goes on throughout your life, you know? Yeah. And finally it comes to storytelling while playing music. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a very beautiful way of looking at it. I think, right. um, yeah, that's very lovely to find music in everyday everyday things around you, right? Because yeah. it's yeah. possible for people like who are so into music. I think not. Yeah, yeah. The rest of us, but, but sometimes, yeah, everyday things. It's it's difficult mm -hmm. sometimes to get like um, music in everyday with the world is behaving so crazy these days, yeah. Yeah. Uh, everywhere. <laughs> so it's uh, very difficult to get music in every sphere of life. Yeah. But yeah, it can be done. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's something that you have to be conscious about and think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, very cool. You know, like um, in India, at least, like a lot of us, when you're talking about learning music or instruments or whatever it is, it's there's this very guru sishya parampara, which is yes. like you know, yes. it's a very be the best thing. Thing. Yeah, um, to get like quality music education through the guru yeah. sishya parampara. But then then what happens to institutions like these schools and universities? So how would you say that they are like different or similar to each other? See, the institution here, like I can talk about um, for Western classical music here, like mm -hmm. Juilliard, Manhattan School of Music. These are really good institution for Western music. Mm -hmm. But in India, that institutionalized music learning from a university that is not always a great idea. Right. But uh, it's it always a Guru Shishya Parampara, that's how it worked. I, I, I do have a student who loved sitar and at the age of 18 went to India without knowing anything, got admission in a school, uh, in a university to learn sitar. Mm -hmm. And obviously in two, three years, he understood that music is not done there because there were no classes. Yeah. There was not a sitar. <laughs> so uh, all these things. So, no, so then he understood. And I even now make a joke. So when my students, uh, many of my students come here and we, we stay for the whole day and mm -hmm. we eat and we practice together and then they go in the evening. Not during COVID times, obviously rules have changed, but yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. And so, but generally here, when a student comes in this, they start looking at the watch after every 50 minutes, you know, <laughs> if what happens if one hour, should I charge for the second hour? Yeah. I generally tell them, no, 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 don't worry about it. Let the lesson be finished. You don't have to worry. I have, I have I'm in no hurry. Yeah. That's why I'm a musician because I don't want to haste anything. <laughs> so, uh, so you just have your time. So, yeah. because it one hour lesson doesn't work for uh, any sort of art. Yeah, I, yeah. I think because yeah. it becomes too mechanical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It, it's harder, I think, also to pick up stuff in that hour. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like for music, for like Carnatic vocals and stuff, like kids usually start learning when they are four or five, when they have a little bit more. But like so the sitar seems a lot more complicated. So what would you say is a good age for people to start learning the sitar? Uh, see, uh, see uh, uh, sitar learning, I think it should be like five, six will be a good option. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, um, the mind is like a very blank slate. You can write yeah. whatever you want mm -hmm. in there. So if you start at that age, we don't have that inhibitions. I know like, uh, like when you grow old, you have so much of, um, what would I call it? Um, conditioning comes in. Yeah. And then you cannot absorb. And a child absorbs like a sponge, anything they do. Yeah. And like you've seen the little kids uh, working on... Um, laptops these days and it's it's crazy i didn't have a, i didn't even know what a lab, computer was till i was 14 yeah. you know so they are so used to they're growing with it yeah so, yeah that's true but yeah this would be a good kind of uh, different skills to pick up instead of like yeah 
all of this right yeah because the technique you don't have to worry uh, because technique is such a thing that you master it and you forget it mm-hmm. you have to forget the technique but as a kid if you master the technique which is really boring that mastering the technique is the boring part that that's why you, everyone <laughs> li- likes the coloring on a canvas yeah. but the boring part is drawing the straight lines and practicing every day you know the perspective practicing a eh, practicing that that's the boring part yeah. that people don't want to do when they're old they they want to do that colors in the beginning right yeah, yeah. so but it's it goes in a in a step yeah so, yeah no yeah. that's that's true that's true we have to get the boring part out of the way to have yeah. start being fun exactly so, yeah. and then at this point the more as you were saying what do i practice more of thinking the thought process is the, that's where the practice comes out not very that i have to sit every day with my sitar and play for 4 5 hours no the thought process is that i'm thinking all the time that's yeah no that's, that's lovely that's a lovely lovely way to put it for sure great great i mean this has been fantastic abik i've learned so much about Thank the you. sitar and um just it's been great talking to you uh, i Likewise. hope you know we get to collaborate with you in the near future I would love to. and bring you on board uh, with carnaticon and you know have yes. people of your caliber it would be great to be part of our uh, community so thank you so much thank um, you so much i'm going to be a little bit greedy and ask you to play a little bit more for us before i let you go okay sure <laughs> Uh, do Thank you have you. anything in mind that if i know i can try um not really anything in in mind as such but you can play something from you know pandit ravi shankar whatever one of his compositions okay. his, that would be great i will i will play a composition of um, very strange um vilayat khan's father inayat khan Mm-hmm. and pandit ravi shankar ji was very much influenced at one point of time by his music when he was very young mm-hmm. and uh, and he almost wanted to be his student oh, yeah. and then he suffered from typhoid and things in those days very and mm-hmm. then it didn't happen and finally he went to alauddin khan and even uh, had a different uh, so it's a composition by uh, inayat khan mm-hmm. that's uh, father of ustad vilayat khan um based on rag khamaj
beautiful so, you magical. so much thank you so much abhi thank you. it was a really pleasure talking to you same here i had such a lovely time um, and i'm looking forward Likewise. to kind of having you on board soon so Definitely. thank you so much for your time today and thank everybody you. watching i'm sure you enjoyed this episode um we'll see you again next week till then take care this is yamini bye 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 bye, bye.